Michael Gazzaniga has a big brain, and he uses his powers for good researching. What else? He researches the brain. Known as the father of cognitive neuroscience, this biology or psychology professor's new book is called Who's in Charge? Free Will and the Science of the Brain. Mike will be speaking tonight at Town Hall, and for tickets and information, you can call 206-633-6443 or link to the event at bobrivers.com. Professor Michael Gazzaniga, welcome to the Bob Rivers Show. How are you, sir? Good. How are you? Very good. I am fascinated by your book, and I haven't dug into it yet, but just what it's about to me is amazing because so many of us wonder if we have free will. You know, you, I would expect a scientist to say that everything that happens in your chemical brain is a, you know, it's a chemical and electronic process and all your decisions are made, blah, blah, blah. But you don't, do you? You've done research and you, you separate the mind from the brain, is that right? Well, <coughs> the, the brain produces the mind. Okay. I think we all agree on that. The brain, like that, that brain is just this like big piece of stuff. That, that yeah. stuff inside between inside your the ears. skull. Yeah, yeah. That's produces great... the mind. Right. What do you mean by that? Well, it's the phenomenon that you and I are currently enjoying talking to each other. And uh, but what uh, I think modern neuroscience is teaching that in fact, uh, not only does it produce the mind, but the mind in turn constrains what the brain does. Mm. So it's an interaction between the thing it produces and the thing that produced it. So we're and, not just in, acting on instinct of everything. We're making, but aren't we making decisions based on years and years and years of uh, oh, survival and all of that? Okay. So, so let, let me jump into the, the essential question you asked by uh, on the free will bit. Yeah. Uh, I just think it's been a, <clears throat> a bad concept, and uh, and so you can get thinking about it by just asking yourself the question: What do you want to be free from? Well, uh, this morning, uh, my wife made some muffins, and she sent them into the studio, and I looked at the muffins, and I said, I shouldn't be eating those, right? And I ate them anyway. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, that's... that's uh, Who was in charge of that? that, that yeah. Well, we know that the answer to that one. Yeah, the so, wife. Yeah. So, yeah, so, so, uh, but the, you say, who do you want to be free from, so meaning, the, yeah. Uh, right, right, right. I mean, you don't want to be free from the physical forces that, that make us all work, that make cells work, that make neurons work, make everything in this room work. You don't want to be free from that. You don't want to be free from your past experiences and your knowledge about what pays off, what doesn't pay off. And so we, uh, you, you have to just come to think that the brain is a decision-making device that takes account of all this information, and you want it to work reliably. Now, you make an analogy uh, to government. Right, that, that that our brain, that we rule over our brain, that our brain makes all kinds of, has situations and suggestions and stuff, but we have to weigh all the information and decide. Well, we always are weighing information and trying to figure out which way to go as a function of what we know about the world. So in that sense, you don't want to be free from all that information. So how I view it is that uh, we really should cast this question, what everybody uh, is interested in, is are we going to hold you responsible for your actions? So it's a question of personal responsibility. And there, it seems to me that no matter what brain scientists figure out, we're all always going to hold people responsible for their actions. Isn't the brain capable of a lot more than we'll let it do? The mind limits the abilities of the brain. I always hear like, oh, you're only using a tiny little bit of your brain. Is there any truth to that? I, I think that was good uh, school marm uh, uh, advice to get the kids back at their desk working. Uh, but, the, the, you know, there's uh, over 100 billion neurons in our brain and uh, how they actually interact to to get us to do anything is uh, is the subject of neuroscience. It's what we're studying, but to... To say, well, we're not using more than uh, 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 we could be using more than we can is just kind of a saying. Aren't people starting to be able to like move stuff? Just thinking about it, like if you're a, a paraplegic type person and you want to, you know, move a spoon across a room or something, you can have a neuron fire and do that. Or is that all science fiction? No, no. There, there's uh, they're hot lining the brain, as it were, as they pick off signals from the brain uh, that uh, you record. And then they 
translate those signals into signals that can control a robotic arm, for instance. Yeah. So Joe's trying to find a way to move even less. <laughs> you can believe that. He's got an amazing brain. Sure. Uh, a doctor, uh, is it doctor, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um You also have a book called The Ethical Brain, The Science of Moral Dilemmas. One of the things we talked about when I thought about meeting you today is, you know, there's guys that can't seem to stay faithful to their wife. You know, you think of the Jesse James and uh, and, and and what's her name? Kat Von D, uh, <laughs> Sandra Bullock, all of his wives, whomever you choose. Like whoever. I was thinking more like and John F. Kennedy, like John you know, F. Kennedy, William uh, Clinton, and you wonder, like, were they just unable to control these moral dilemmas? Who's in charge for those guys? Yeah, well, uh, I don't know who's in charge, but uh, they're certainly to be held responsible for it because uh, they they can follow rules and they broke a rule. So uh, th- that's the essential position that responsibility lies in the social contract we all have with each other. Mm. And it's rules, and you break them, you're responsible. So I, I don't look for uh, uh, so initial you, causes. So you make a dumb uh, move, even in nature, and you get eaten by the lion. Right. You're held right. responsible by right. nature for the move right. that you made. Yeah. Actually, that sort of like uh, leads into a question that I've always had. So there's these... Um, Peoples that have not been discovered and have no interaction with technology the way we know it, like, for instance, the Flechero tribe in the Amazon versus us with all of our gadgets and gizmos. Yes. Do our brains look the same? Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 Great question. The, the, essential, the essential thing is that all of our brains are the same. Everybody, every species of, uh, I mean, every, every culture-based person, they do tests on this. They'll give common, say, moral judgment questions to everybody in the world. And um, we basically all respond the same way to them. Our brains are the same, but aren't some bigger than others? And isn't it related oh, yeah. to head size? I mean, you pretty big head. I mean, you got a pretty big brain. I mean, I've always assumed I've had a got a good Someone's size. Someone's born with a small head. Is that? Is well, that I don't know, but I've noticed that. I mean, I've got a pretty well, good size head. We too. just read a study that done in England that says men with large guts are less intelligent. Mm. So it's fair to ask: Are bigger-headed people bigger-brained? Smarter people. Uh, well, this is this is an old chestnut in the field. Uh, uh, w- w- that brain size per se is what uh, predicts intelligence, and I think basically the view is now it's the uh, individual circuitry within a brain that defines whether Jones is smarter than Smith or what, what whatever their difference is. All right, I'm going to ask you a question that uh, I, I'm sure you must have an opinion on this. I'm not sure if it's in the book. Apes, mm. cats. Mm-hmm. Dogs, mm-hmm. do they have any feelings? You talk about the mind being separate from the brain. Uh, it's a human conception that we're the only sentient beings; that the rest of them are operating purely on instinct. Where do you fall in that argument? Well, we have more instincts than they do, and that's how you think about it. So that uh, the the trick we have that they don't have is that everybody in this room is thinking about social processes all the time you're thinking about me what's my intention i'm thinking about you everybody's thinking about everybody else that's what we do we have theories of mind about the other person now that dog your pet does not have a theory about you he's not blasphemy thinking. wait a minute <laughs> well, watch it doctor <laughs> i knew this was going to be trouble i have a um, bad feeling <laughs> but, uh, well uh, uh, to, uh, to argue jody's point isn't the dog going if I wag my tail, maybe I'll get a treat. Oh, is, oh, oh the dog knows all kinds of th- stuff. That's, that's a theory this, of mind, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, no, no, no. That's a reaction to a, a local stimulus. Uh, I can have a theory about you, and I will start making prediction how you will answer the next question. Well, yeah. but before you move that's off true. of that. That's true. It's more before, involved. Yeah. Yeah. Before you move off of that, with what you're saying, give, if what you're saying is true, Jody could be in a house fire, and she's had a dog that she's known the dog's entire life. Dog truly loves her. Mm-hmm. But I've got a stake in my pocket, and I'm a total stranger. Do I get saved, or does Jody get saved? Uh, it depends on her dog, I think. <laughs> well, if you're talking about Spanky and Beaker, I think we both know that it's me, and that you're going down with that raw steak. Okay. Just check. Um, uh, Doc, of all the things you've learned about the brain, being a big scientist and all that, and, and written all these cool books, um, what have you learned about the brain that surprised even you? Oh, gosh. I think... Uh, it's uh, how we are uh, basically storytelling animals, that uh, we need to put everything that's happening uh, in front of us every day, that we, that we, how we behave into a storyline. And I think we discovered, that uh, came out of, of our research, uh, a part of the brain that's particular 
uh, specialized for doing that. It's called the interpreter. Mm. And so it's this thing that gives each of us our individual uh, spin, as it were, yeah. on why we do the things we do, why we feel the things we feel. And that's why we all have a different theory as to why we do such things that we all might commonly do. So That's so, very cool stuff. So yeah. that's cool. Yeah, that is very cool. And, Storytelling you know, animals. Well, it's like you've known us our whole lives. Yeah, really. <laughs> well, and, and, and uh, what he was saying is uh, the, the one thing I thought of is that animals don't try to make each other laugh. No, no, that's right. Yeah, that's and right. and they don't try to. There's no stand-up comics in right. the animal kingdom. You know. <laughs> oh, you've never seen Beaker after he has a couple of treats. <laughs> <laughs> he goes off. All right. Uh, it's fascinating and fun to meet you. I wish we could talk all day. People can meet you today, uh, tonight actually at 7:30 p.m. Uh, Town Hall Science Speakers Series. Do you know our friend John Medina? I don't. He's written a book called Brain Rules. You both talk about theory of mind in the same way. Oh, good. Um, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll tell you more about him before you head out the door. Uh, Dr. Michael Gazaniga, welcome to the show, and thank you for being here. Thank you. All right. We'll put information about his book online at bobrivers.com. Oh, 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 before we go, we have this thing called the last word of the day. Mm-hmm. Yesterday's last word was? Uh, the uh, Amazonian tribe that I said. The name of the tribe was? Flecheros. The Flecheros. And uh, the next day, people call in and win a prize if they call, are the first to call when they hear us use the word of the day in a sentence. And that was hard for you to do, by the way. It was a good question. Yeah. Uh, would you do the honor of giving us the last word of the day? It can be any word in the English language, one solo word, and it will end the program. Alicinera. 